Known as a Nissan Sephiro in the Asian market, the A33 platform was also sold as a Nissan Maxima in Europe, Middle East, New Zealand, and Australia. Here in the U.S., our version of the Nissan Maxima featured different styling inside and out. The Sephiro was also sold through Infinity dealers as the i30 initially, and in 2001 became the i35 with the larger displacement engine. Painted in obsidian black clear coat, this 2002 Infiniti i35 features a beige leather interior with walnut wood tone interior accents and features a nice options list as seen to the left. This car sits right in the middle of the four year production run with production started for the 2000 model year and ending in the model year 2004. From my research it seems that the 2002 model year was among the best of the i35 offerings with the majority of the updates including minor styling changes inside and out. A retuned suspension system, standardized traction control, larger brakes, and electric drive by wire electronic throttle, and of course the name change from I-30 to I-35. And this Infiniti is front wheel drive and is powered by the all aluminum dual overhead cam 24 valve VQ35DE V6 engine. It features a then all new variable intake valve timing, port tuned fuel injection, a 10 to 3 compression ratio, equal, equal length headers, and variable capacity GTR based mufflers. It creates 255 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 246 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. Car and driver in 2001 tested a pre-production car to 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.9 seconds, 0 to 100 miles per hour in 18.2 seconds, quarter mile in 15.3 seconds at 92 miles per hour, with a top speed of 127 miles per hour. The i35 features an 18.5 US gallon fuel tank and consumes 5 gallons per 100 miles driven with an estimated 425 mile driving range, which is something that I challenge. EPA fuel economy figures are 20 miles per gallon city, 26 miles per gallon highway, and 23 miles per gallon combined. And while outside the US market, a 5 speed manual transmission is standard, us in North America only had the electronically controlled 4-speed automatic available as a sole transmission offering. And looking around the rear of the i35, Infiniti tried to overcome previous complaints that customers' Infiniti cars, which are higher priced, look very similar to the Nissan Maxima counterpart. Stylists with Infiniti overcame these objections with unique front and rear styling. In addition, Infiniti used laser etched body panels for tighter, more accurate fits that have tighter gaps. The i35 features more traditionally styled tail lamps, which are incandescent for all bulbs. Along the plinth above the plate housing spills infinity with the scripted i35 badge to the right. Down below, a single exhaust outlet with dual bright tip tips peer out from underneath the bumper. Along the profile, the i35 sits on a 108.3 inch wheelbase with an overall length of 193.7 inches. It is aerodynamically efficient car with a drag coefficient of 0.31 and shares the same basic silhouette of its Maxima brethren. Steering is hydraulically assisted, vehicle speed sensitive, variable rate rack and pinion with 2.6 turns lock to lock and a 40 foot turning circle. Wheels are 17 by 7 inch 6 spoke silver painted aluminum with P21555R17 Bridgestone Toronza EL42 tires. Brakes are four wheel power assisted disc brakes with 11.65 inch rotors up front and 10.94 inch rotors in the rear. They are assisted by ABS, electronic brake force distribution, and brake assist. Car and driver reported 70 miles prior to zero and long 189 feet. Around the front, the i35 looks similar to the Nissan Sephiro and yet completely different from the US market Nissan Maxima on which it is based. The headlamps, as standard equipment, are xenon high intensity discharge arc lamps with the distinctive bluish white light. While common nowadays, this feature was a sign of luxury cars during this time frame. This example features dark tinted headlamp lenses with smoked gray bezels. Daytime running lights, high beams, and turn indicators are all integral into the assembly. 
And down below, we have halogen high intensity fog lamps that are widely spaced apart. All right, let's take a look inside. We don't have smart key access here, but we do have keyless remote entry. Unlocking the car and approaching the car. Opening the door reveals a very nicely crafted interior. Nice beige leather and a nice amount of wood harvested from the plastic forest. It does have a nice contrast, however. You do have gathered vinyl trim on the door panels. All the areas of, uh, that are beige are pretty much soft touch. Dark titanium door poles, two driver memory. Of course, you have power windows, power mirrors, and power door locks. And the mirrors are also heated. You've also got electronic trunk release and fuel door release. Map pockets, illuminated entry. You've also got stainless steel tread plates. And up on the dashboard, you have the controls for your power assisted mirrors. And down below, 8-way power driver and passenger seat are standard equipment on this car. The seats are very comfortable. They're very nice and supportive, although they do lack a lot of lateral support. However, this car is not designed for cornering. So overall, the overall support and comfort of the seats is very high. Alright, and let's pan through the interior and show more details. As you can see, nice fluid power assisted steering. You've also got a leather wrapped steering wheel. Multifunction controls on either side of the steering wheel. On the left hand side, you have your trip computer controls, as well as audio controls. On the right hand side are your cruise controls. Multifunction control for the headlights and turn signals, and you've also got another multifunction control for the wipers. Nice, bright, easy to read electroluminescent Optitron instrumentation. It does feature a trip computer, which is really handy. Overall, the gauges are bright, clear, and easy to read, even in bright daytime conditions. Looking over the top of the dash, the dash is actually in really nice shape. The car is very well cared for. No cracks, splits, or anything like that. Up top, you have your climate controls and the classic oval-styled Infinity Clock. You've also got an AM-FM 6-disc CD changer with tape player. It does feature a Bose Premium AM-FM cassette player, 200-watt amplifier, 6 speakers, and a neodymium subwoofer. Single-zone automatic climate controls. Pretty simple and easy to use controls. Down below you have your four-way flashers, you have your cigarette lighter with a power point. You've also got your ash receiver, which is removable and cleanable. Nice large cup holders behind the plastic wood trim. You've also got your power rear window sunshade. That's a very nice feature to have. All right, and you have two stage heated seats. Kind of a nice little feature here is the pop-up adjustable center armrest. It pops up and locks into place for a higher adjustability. You've also got a nice deep storage well. Overall, the interior of the Infiniti i35 is a very nice place to be. Even for it being almost 20 years old, this is a still a very nice luxury car. Overhead, you do have an automatic dimming rearview mirror with integrated compass display. On the driver's side sun visor, you do have a 3-channel home link universal garage door opener. Overhead, you have adjustable map or you have individual map lights, power sunroof controls, and you've also got sunglasses holder. Illuminated vanity mirrors come standard, and the sun visors do uh, tilt out, but they do not slide out, but they do have slide out extensions. 
And of course you have overhead assist handles. All right, let's take a look at the rear seat. The rear seat is pretty nicely styled as well. It does feature the same uh, bird's eye maple trim, gathered vinyl trim on the door panels. Outboard seats are heated with two stage heated seats. And you've also got power window controls, the same stainless steel tread plates. You've also got rear assist handles mounted in the seat backs, which is a nice touch. And of course, matte pockets on both sides. High adjustable head restraints on all seats. Three point seat belts for all seats. And of course, the seats are 60 40 split folding. And you have a fold down center armrest. There are no cup holders or storage containers in this uh, armrest, however. Overhead, you do have a coat hooks and adjust or assist handles. An additional coat hook on the back of the right seat. You've also got a 12 volt power point, and your cup holders slide out here. All right, folding the seats is very easy. Just locating the plunger at the top of the seat, pulling up, we'll release the seat back. The seat backs also lock into place, which is really handy. There is the right side seat folding down. It does have access to a little, uh, a little bit smaller of the trunk access. It also locks. All right, and accessing the luggage area is very easy by pressing the luggage release button on the door trim, or you can press and hold the key fob button, and that will release the trunk lid as well. The trunk lid is spring-loaded, so it pops up. And opening the trunk reveals a nice wide luggage area. It is fully lined and fully carpeted, and also features a low liftover height. And this trunk capacity is 12.3 cubic feet as equipped with the full size spare tire option that we have. If we did not have this option in this car, luggage capacity would be 2.6 cubic feet more at 14.9 cubic feet. You have your jack and tools in this right hand uh, storage area. Underneath the floor mat, you do have, as we stated before, our full size spare tire. You've also got some compartmentalized storage as well. All right, and this does conclude our in-depth walk-around review of the 2002 Infiniti i35. If you liked this video and would like to see more like it, please comment down below. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And, of course, check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash neighborhoodcarreviews. And, of course, as always, thanks for watching.